Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is October 8th, Monday, October 8th, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, we are going to talk about what is now Hurricane Michael, which is presently containing maximum sustained winds, according to the National Hurricane Center, in the range of 70, mile, 70 miles per hour. It's tracking off toward the north at around seven miles per hour. And over the next couple of days is expected under current forecast guidance to strengthen into a major hurricane, a category three, before striking the U.S. Gulf Coast and the, with the present track, bringing it onshore by Wednesday near the Florida Panhandle. Presently, Michael is just to the east of, of the tip of the Yucatan Peninsula and tracking just west of, of Cuba as it moves off to, toward the north. And you can see quite a bit of convection in the central dense overcast as the storm moves off toward the north. The storm is expected to move over warmer than normal waters in the Gulf of Mexico over the next couple of days, even as wind shear near the storm is expected to lessen, bringing with it the potential for rapid intensification. The National Hurricane Center noted that one of its models, one of its hurricane models, gave it a 55 to 60 percent chance of rapidly intensifying and the forecast guidance for, for many of the models does include a rapid intensification phase. So a, a dangerous situation for interests along the Gulf Coast at present, but also something that people along the East Coast, particularly in the Southeast and Mid-Atlantic need to monitor due to the fact that Michael packs a lot of moisture and there's already a very moisture rich environment over the southeast and east coast and we've had a number of floods in this region this summer so michael bringing additional heavy rainfall has the potential to exacerbate flooding for certain regions so looking at some of the climatological data i just like to point out that michael likely is receiving a couple of boosts from factors related to human-caused climate change, one of them being that sea surface temperatures in the Gulf of Mexico are presently much warmer than normal, with temperatures ranging from around a little bit less than a degree Celsius, half a degree Celsius to about 0 0.8 degrees Celsius above average in Michael's current ocean environment. But as it moves north, it's going to move into waters that are warmer than normal in the 1.4 degrees Celsius above average range just west of Florida and approaching the Gulf Coast more than two degrees Celsius above average. So a lot of ocean fuel for this storm, ocean fuel which has been enhanced by an overall warming of the ocean system due to human caused climate change, primarily due to fossil fuel burning. Also just like to note that Atmospheric moisture levels over the eastern half of the U.S. at present are quite high and have been quite high. Anyone living in the east right now could attest to very humid conditions in association with also much warmer than normal conditions for the fall period of early October. Here up in Gaithersburg, Maryland and near the D.C. area, we recently had a 90 degree day, which is just practically unheard of for, for this region for this time of year. Now, it's worth noting that atmospheric moisture loading is increased by human-caused climate change, and for every degree Celsius of increase, the overall atmospheric moisture loading increases by about 7%. And what this does is it increases the peak potential intensity of rainstorms, but it also provides more fuel in the form of, of convective fuel for storms and, and hurricanes themselves are, are convection machines. So hurricanes peak intensity also increases as both atmospheric water vapor increases and as sea surface temperature increases, both of which are factors which are driven by human caused climate change. Now looking at 
the model forecast. I'm looking at a GFS model, and this is for 12, uh, 12 Zulu hour on Wednesday, October 10th. The GFS model brings a 957 millibar hurricane just off the Florida Panhandle coast by mid-Wednesday. And, and this, is, this would be a very dangerous situation for people along the Florida Panhandle. Uh, storm surge potentials are, are increased because the, the ocean bottom has, has, a, has a shallow slope, and so storm surges can, can run up pretty high in this zone with, with a major hurricane. And, and this millibar range is in the range of a major hurricane. National Hurricane Center is predicting between about 115 mile per hour to 125 mile per hour maximum sustained winds associated with a storm just prior to landfall. So, so a, a dangerous situation that could drive strong storm surges into the panhandle if this forecast emerges. Now, I want to go ahead and advance this model. I want you to pay attention to the rain over the east as the model goes forward. So we have a trough coming in as well as Michael approaches the coast and quite a bit of moisture streaming in off these much warmer than normal temperatures in the Atlantic Ocean and in the Gulf of Mexico. And note some rather heavy rain predict predicted for the Carolinas, which already saw a very severe rainfall impact from Florence. Running into the early morning hours on Thursday, you just note the very widespread rainfall in association with both Michael and the trough as both progress toward the east with Michael getting tangled up in the trough a bit, but still pulling in quite a bit of moisture from the Atlantic Ocean and also maintaining tropical storm status over land for quite some time, moving into Georgia as, as a strong tropical storm if, if you're taking a look at the, the millibar measures, possibly even the weak hurricane still at this time, which would be uh, getting into the afternoon on Thursday. Now note the very extreme precipitation getting into Thursday, particularly over North Carolina, which again was hit very hard by Florence. So we might see, see some severe additional flooding rains from Michael as it moves off to the north and east. And also note the storm is, is still maintaining approximate tropical storm strength, even as it exits into the Atlantic Ocean per, uh, predicted in this model by, by early Friday. So, so a very severe rainfall event for the U.S. East Coast overall and an extended storm event from the U.S. Gulf Coast all the way to the Mid-Atlantic by late this week, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And I just want to point out predicted rainfall totals from the National Hurricane Center show a wide swath of rainfall in the range of about four to 10 inches with some hot spots in the range of, of 10 to 15 inches in, in some of the forecast models. And again, note this swath of predicted four to six inch rainfall over an area that was already hit really hard by Florence, which could provide additional flooding. I'm also just gonna show you the, the National Weather Service um, NOAA map for predicted rainfall showing in the range of five to as high as 10 with, with potentially as high as 15 inches in some local spots along the path of the storm through the Panhandle and into Georgia and parts of South Carolina with four to five inches potential in, in this model for parts of North Carolina. So a very another very severe storm event, very severe cyclone event uh, on tap for the U.S. Southeast and for the U.S. Gulf Coast, and, and, and a storm which is also very likely being influenced by factors related to human-caused climate change, such as warmer than normal sea surface temperatures and higher than normal atmospheric moisture loadings, which is helping to spike various intensity aspects of this storm. And of course, in addition, the storm will run in on the higher sea levels due to the already recorded rise in oceans due to glacial melt and thermal expansion. So another extreme weather event. Thank you for joining me and I'll be chatting with you soon.